Okey diyoruz en son ne oldu? Bunlar feli ürünü gördüler. Nasıl bir tepki verdikleriyle başladık. Hepsinin böyle temkinli olması bir tık ilgincime gitti benim. Ama şöyle bir düşününce olabilir gibi bir sonucu da çıkarmış. Sonuçta Marten şeytanlardan aşırı korkmaya başladıydı zaten. Dövüşlerinden sonra feli ürünü görünce de her ne kadar böyle... Cinsel olarak çekilse bile Feliriyana öte yandan artık yeter şeytan gördüm şeytan melek bok küsür sayısı ben gidiyorum buradan sadece normal insanlar görmek istiyorum modunda hayır hayır hayır hayır falan tutuyor kendini. Tempi gitmiyor onu da anlayabiliyoruz çünkü onun kültürü gereği onlar kendi vücutlarına zihinlerine böyle büyük bir hakimiyet sahibiler onun için. böyle cinsel olarak çekilmesi onu karşı koyamaması gibi bir şey de sonuçlanmıyor. Bir şeyin hatta öyle çekildiğini hissettiği an tehlikeyi de hissediyor. Büyü olduğunu biliyor gördüğü şeyin onun için geri adım atabiliyor yine. Deden gitmiyor. Deden gitmesi gerekirdi bence ama öte yandan Hespe ile yeni oldular. Hespe hayatın aşkı tam. O sebepten dolayı deden gitmiyor. Olabilir yine Hespe zaten gitmiyor çünkü lezbiyen değil. Kvot, kvot çekimi hissediyor ama gitmemeye karar veriyor en baş. Ama sonra düşünüyor diyor ki karşında gerçek büyü var. Hani bu, bu fairy tale falan değil. Düpedüz gerçek magic bu. Hani böyle üniversitedeki gibi falan da kaypak magic de değil. Böyle işte binding işte bir şey bir şey benzedikçe birisine ne yaparsan diğerine de onu yaparsın gibi de değil. Düp Bu düpedüz gerçek magic diyor ve ben bir neymarım diyor. Ben işte bu yolculuğa çıktım ve böyle bir şeyle karşılaştım. Ben buna gitmeyeceksem bütün bunların hiçbir anlamı yoktu. Kendimi asla affedemezdim falan dedi. Kesinlikle haklı diyoruz. Gideceği çok belliydi. Onun yerinde ben olsam ben de giderdim. Bence kim olsa giderdi diyoruz. Kvot gibi bir konuda hani üniversiteye gidiyor, büyü yapabiliyor, iyi büyü yapıyor falan. Kvot dedi ki bunlara beni işte 3 günlük bir süre boyunca bekleyin Penny's Earth'de. 3 günlük süre içinde orada buluşuruz dedi. Bu Feliriyon'a doğru gitmeye başladı. Sonra dedim bağırdı işte o gidiyorsa ben de giderim falan gibi. Sonra ama tam lafının yarısında acı çığlıkları cırt attı. Sonra bir baktı Kespe bunu yere sermiş. Kolunu arkasına kıvırmış falan. Dedan orada kalmış her Zaten kal diyoruz. Hayatın aşkıyla birbirinize açıldığınız aman okudumun manyağı yetin şeyle diyoruz. Elindekiyle ki elindeki de ağzımış gibi falan. Yani böyle hayatın aşkı açısından diyor. Sonra Kvot'u görüyoruz. Feliriyan'ı kaçıyor Kvot. Kovalıyor direkt böyle şehvi, şehvetvari bir şekilde. Sonra bunlar yakalanıyorlar birbirlerine. Aşırı derecede true and true bir seks yapıyorlar. Ve Kvot o kadar climax'e çıkıyor ki oradaki şeyi görüyoruz. Hani böyle resmen bir insanın çıkacağı climax'in sınırın üstüne çıkacak bir climax'e çıkıyor. Çünkü seks yaptığı şey insan değil. Ve o sınırın ötesine geçmek Kvot'a zarar vermeye başlıyor, onu öldürmeye başlıyor. Orada bitirdik. Oradan devam edeceğiz. Başlamadan önce diyecek bir şey var mı düşünüp geliyorum. Okey, bu bölümler çok güzel, çok sağlam, çok enteresan şeyler olacak, aşırı önemli şeyler olacak. Bir dakika. Onun için bayağı heyecanlı. Chapter 96, The Fire Itself. I walk with something brushing at the edges of my memory. I open my eyes and blue milyon diyor. Neyse. I opened my eyes and saw trees stretched against a twilight sky. There were silken pillows all around me, but a few feet away Felurian lay, her naked body loosely splayed in sleep. Bu da uyuyor, melekler değil, bunlar feyriler. Ne diyoruz biz bunları cin peri, peri diyoruz. Periler de uyuyormuş. She looked smooth and perfect as a sculpture. She sighed in her sleep, and I chided myself for that thought. I knew she was nothing like cold stone. 
She was warm and supple, the smoothest marble green stone by comparison. My hand reached out to touch her, but I stopped myself, not wanting to disturb the perfect scene before me. A distant thought began to negate me, but I brushed it away like an irritating fly. Denna irritating thought derken denna irritating bir thought. Hani bu durumda olabilir çünkü denna'ya aşık. Denna'ya aşık olduğunu hatırlarsa şu an içinde olduğu güzel durum bozulmaya başlamış olacak. O mükemmel durum onun için onu atıyor olabilir. Onun için ona irritating diyor olabilir. Pelurin's lips parted and sighed, making a sound like a doll. I remembered the touch of those lips. I ached and forced myself to look away from her soft, flower petal mouth. Her closed eyelids were patterned like a butterfly's wings, swept in walls, their holes the opening of deep purple and black with Traceries of pale gold that blended to the color of her skin. As her eyes moved gently in sleep, the pattern shifted as if the butterfly fanned its wings. The sight alone was probably worth the price all men must pay for seeing it. I ate her with my eyes, knowing all the songs and stories I had heard were nothing. She is what men dream of. All the places I have been, all the women I have seen, I have met her equal only once. Okay, Denai ile mi kıyaslıyor şu an? Bu çok enteresan bir nokta buraya bakacak. Something in my mind screamed at me, but I was bemused by the motion of her eyes beneath her lips. Okay, Denai'dan bahsetme büyük ihtimal şu an bir büyülü. Tuzağın içindesin, çık dışarı gibisinden bir çığlık diyoruz. But I was bemused by the motion of her eyes beneath her lips. The shape her mouth made as if she would kiss me even while she slept. I sweated the thought away again, irritated. I was going to go mad or die. The idea finally found its way through to my conscious mind, and I felt every hair on my body stand suddenly on end. I had a moment of perfect, clear lucidity that resembled coming up for air and quickly closed my eyes, trying to lower myself into the heart of stone. It didn't come. For the first time in my life, that cool, taciturn state escaped me. Behind my eyes, Felurian distracted me, the sweet breath, the soft breast, the urgent half dispairing sighs that slipped through hungry, pedal tender lips. Stone. I kept my eyes closed and wrapped a calm rationality of heart of stone around me like a mantle before I dared even think of her again. What did I know? I brought to mind a hundred stories of Felurian and plucked out the recurring themes. Felurian was beautiful. She charmed mortal men. They followed her into the fay and died in her embrace. How did they die? It was very simple to guess. Extreme physical stress. Things had been rather rigorous and the sedentary or frail might not have fared so well as I. Now that I stopped to notice, my entire body felt like a well wrung wreck. My shoulders ached, my knees burned, and my neck bore the sweet revising of love bites from my right ear down my chest. And my body flushed, and I struggled deeper into the heart of stone until my pulse slowed, and I could force the thought of her from the front of my mind. Okay, o kadar aktif bir şekilde kvota geliyor ki hani büyük ihtimal zaten şey oluyor. Direkt böyle çok aktif bir şekilde hani orada onun varoluşunu görme anı bile 
direkt birisini erekte yapıyor. Bunlar yine seks yapmaya başlıyorlar. Bunlar ayrılıyorlar. O kişi tekrar göre tekrar seks yapma ihtiyacı çıkıyor falan. Bu o kadar çok oluyor ki kişi tükenmeye başlıyor. Böyle. Çünkü hani artık seks yapacak bir şey aslında kalmadı. Ama Felirian büyülü bir şekilde orada hani limitin ötesinde güzel tekrar aktif ediyor falan. Bir yerden sonra yok olmaya başlıyor vücut. Hani tam anlatamadım ama onu şu an kavrayabildim sanırım. Hani böyle o mantığı görüyorum. Tehlikeyi seziyorum. Not cool. I could remember four stories where men had come back from their fey alive. All of them cracked as their potters cobbles. What manner of madness did they exhibit? Obsessive behavior, accidental death due to separation from reality, and wasting away from extreme melancholy. Three died within a span of days. The fourth story told of the man lasting nearly half a year. But something didn't make sense. Admittedly, Pelirium was lovely, skilled without a doubt, but to the extent that every man died or went insane, No, it simply wasn't likely. Yani bir yandan anormal derecede sarıyor seks yapması Felirian'la ama böyle bir yüzde yüz sayılacak bir seviyede de değil diyor. Kvot şu an. O zaman hani bir şekilde anormal derecede güzel bir kadın görüyoruz ve bu kadın anormal derecede iyi seks yapıyor. Bir özellik daha düşünüp gidiyorum. Bir de böyle belli bir seviyeye kadar büyü yapabiliyor yaptığı seksin güzel geçmesi için. Ama onun dışında başka bir ekstra yok. Ve bu üç faktörü bir insan algılayabildiği an karşısındaki oluşumun bir insanın biraz ötesinde olan bir oluşum olduğunu algılayabildiğinden mi bahsediyor burada sanırım. I don't mean to belittle the experience. I don't doubt for a second that it had, quite naturally, deprived men of their faculties in the past. I, however, knew myself to be quite sane. I briefly entertained the notion that I was insane and didn't know that. Then I considered the possibility that I had always been insane, acknowledged it as more likely than the former, then pushed both thoughts from my mind. I still closed, I lay there, enjoying a quiet languor of a sort I'd never felt before. I savored the moment that opened my eyes and prepared to make my escape. I looked around the pavilion at silken draperies and scattered cushions. These were only ornaments for Felurian. She lay in the middle of it all, all rounded him and slender leg and light muscles shifting underneath her skin. She was watching me. If she was beautiful at rest, she was dully, doubly so awake. Asleep, she was a painting of a fire. Awake, she was the fire itself. It may seem strange to you that at this point I felt fear. It may seem strange that only an arm's length from the most attractive woman in the world, I was suddenly reminded of my own mortality. Okay, yine mesela şu, kel- şu laf benim dikkatimi çekiyor. From the most attractive woman in the world, hani böyle sanki diğer insanlarla kıyaslıyormuş gibi. Eyvallah zaten kıyaslı diyoruz. Ama öte yandan böyle bir peri olan bir şeyden bahsediyoruz. Hani onu... İnsanlarla aynı kategorileştirme olayına koymazsın bence. Bu durumda Felurian o derecede de bir yüzde yüz değil. O derece tanrısal değil. Aynen. She smiled like a knife in velvet and stretched like a cat in the sun. Her body was built to stretch the arc of her back, the smooth expanse of her belly going taut. The round fullness of her breasts was lifted by the motion of her arms, and suddenly I felt like a stag in rot. My body reacted to her, and I felt as if someone were hammering at the cool impassivity of hard of stone with a hot poker. 
my control, split for a moment, and a less disciplined piece of my mind started composing a song to her. Okay, Dios. I couldn't spare the attention to rein that piece of myself back in. So I focused on staying safe in the heart of stone, ignoring both her body and that nettering part of my mind forming rhyming couplets somewhere in the back of my head. It wasn't the easiest thing to do, as a matter of fact. It made the ordinary rigors of sympathy seem simple as skipping. If not for the training I'd received at the university, I would have been a broken, pitiful thing, unable to concentrate on my own captivation. Şekilde üniversitedeki eğitimi Hani böyle bana içten gelen şeyler doğrudur tarz bir prensip takip ediyorum ben kendi hayatımda. Ama bu aynı şekilde benim sigarayı bırakmamı falan da sağlayan bir şey. Hani bu açıdan çok keyfiyetli bir şey değil. Ben şeye güvenesim gelmiyor. Hani işte bu oturup matematik problemi çözme olayı var. Hani bu havuz problemleri, cacur. İşte ne oluyor biz sevdiğimiz işleri yapmayı bırakıp Böyle yorulduğumuz şeyleri yapmaya devam ediyoruz ve felaket yorulana kadar yapmaya devam ediyoruz ama kendimizi ittirerek yapmaya devam ediyoruz. Olan bu bana doğru gelmiyor. Bir insanın sadece sevdiği şey doğru yapabilen bir şey olmuş oluyor. Bence böyle düşünerekten buradaki üniversitedeki de sistemin böyle olduğunu düşünüyordum ve çok hoşuma gitmiyordu. Ama Kod iddia ediyor ki burada bu sistem beni hayatta tuttu. Bir şekilde sevmediği şeyi yapma olayı. Ben düşünüyorum ki benim sistemim hayatta tutar mıydı? Düşünüp geliyorum. Aa, bence tutardı çünkü ben sigarayı bıraktım. Hayat mıyım? Yarısı sigara içen bir insanım ben ve sigarayı bıraktım. Kolay değil diyoruz. Very slowly relaxed out of her stretch and looked at me with ancient eyes. Eyes unlike anything I had ever seen. They were a striking color. The summer dusk was in her eyes, a sort of twilight blue. They were fascinating, in fact, with lids of winged butterflies. There wasn't any white to them at all. Her lips the shade of sunset skies. I clenched my jaw, split that chattering piece of myself away, and walled it off in a distant corner of my mind, letting it sing to itself. Pelerin tilted her head to one side. Her eyes were as intent and expressionless as a bird's. Why are you so quiet, flame lover? Have I quenched you? Defa konuştu lan diyoruz. Yedi kelimeli ilk söyledi şey. Bizahmet. Her voice was odd to my ear. It had no rough edges to it at all. It was all quite smoothness, like a piece of perfectly polished glass. Despite its odd softness, Pelerin's voice ran down my spine, making me feel like a cat that's just been struck down to the tip of its tail. I retreated further into the heart of stone, felt it cool and reassuring around me. However, while the majority of my attention was focused on self-control, the small, mad, lyric part of my mind leapt to the fore and said, never quenched, though I am dosed in you, I burn. The motion of your turning head is like a song, is like a spark, is like a breath that blows me and fans to flame a fire that Cannot help but spread and roar your name. Bunu söylüyor sanırım. A poet aynen bunu söylüyormuş. Okay. Felirion's face lit up. A poet. I should have known you for a poet by how your body moved. The gentle hush of her voice caught me unprepared again. It wasn't that. It wasn't that her words were. Pretty or husky or sultry, it was nothing so tawdry or affected as that. But when she spoke, I couldn't help but be aware of the fact that her breath was 
pressed from her breast, past the soft sweetness of her throat, and shaped by the careful play of lips and teeth and tongue. She came closer, moving on her hands and knees through the pillows. You looked like a poet, fiery and fear. Her voice was no louder than a breath as she cut my face with her hands. Poets are gentler, they say nice things. There was only one person I'd ever heard whose voice was similar to this, Elodin. On rare occasions, his voice would fill the air as if the world itself were listening. Hilarion's voice was not resonant. It did not fill the forest glade. Hers was the hush before a southern summer storm. It was soft as a brushing feather. It made my heart step sideways in my chest. Speaking thus, when she called me a poet, it did not raise my heckles or make me grit my teeth. From her, it sounded like the sweetest thing a man was ever called. Such was the power of her voice. Pelirin brushed her fingertips across, across my lips. Poet kisses are best. You kiss me like a candle flame. She brought one of her hands back to touch her mouth. Her eyes bright at the memory. I took her hand and pressed it tenderly. My hands have always seemed graceful, but next to hers, they looked brutish and crude. I breathed against her palm as I spoke. Her kisses are like sunlight on my lips. She lowered her eyes, butterfly wings dancing. I felt my windless knee mindless, need for her slacken and began to understand. This was magic, but nothing like what I knew. Not sympathy or sigildry. Fairy made men mad with desire the same way I gave off body heat. It was natural for her, but she could control it. Her gaze wandered over my tangle of claws and Longing stream messily at one corner of the glade. They looked oddly out of place amid the six and soft colors. I saw her eyes settle on my lute case. She froze. Is my flame a sweet poet? Does he sing? Her voice trembled and I could feel the tenseness in her body as she waited for an answer. She looked back at me. I smiled. Felirin scampered off and brought back my lute case like a child with a new toy. As I took it, I saw her eyes were white and wet. I looked into her eyes and in a flash of understanding, I realized what her life must be like. A thousand years old and lonely from time to time. If she wanted companionship, she had to seduce and lure and for what an evening of company. An hour, how long could an average man last before his will broke and he became as mindless as a fawning dog? Not long. And who would she meet in the forest? Farmers and hunters, what entertainment could they provide slaves to her patients? I've had a moment of pity for her. I know what loneliness is like. I took the lute from its case and began to tune it. I struck an experimental chord and carefully tuned it again. But to play for the most beautiful woman in the world, it wasn't hard to decide actually. My father had taught me to judge an audience. I struck up Sister's Flynn. If you've never heard of it, I am not surprised. It's a bright and lively song about two sisters gossiping while they argue over the price of butter. Most people want to hear stories of legendary adventure and romance, but what do you play for someone out of legend? What do you sing for a woman who has been the object of romance for a mortal age? You play her songs of ordinary people, so I hoped. Kadia. 
She clapped delightedly at the end of it. More, more. She smiled, hopefully poking her head to make it a request. Her eyes were wide and eager and adoring. I played her Larm and his ale pot. I played her Blacksmith's Daughters. I played her a ridiculous song about a priest chasing a call that I'd written when I was 10 and never even named. Perrin laughed and applauded. She covered her mouth in shock and her eyes in embarrassment. The more I played, the more she reminded me of a young country wife attending her first fear, full of pure joy, face shining with innocent delight, eyes wide in amazement at everything she sees. And lovely, of course, I concentrated on my fingerings so as not to think about it. After each song, she rewarded me with a kiss that made it difficult to decide what to play next. Not that I minded horribly, I'd come to realize rather quickly that I preferred kisses to coins. I played her Tinker Tenor, let me tell you, the image of Felurian, her quiet, thrilling voice singing the chorus of my favorite drinking song is Something that will never, never leave me, not until I die. If you die. All the while I felt the charm she had on me slicken, bit by bit, it gave me room to breathe. I relaxed and let myself slide a little farther out of the heart of stone. This passionate calm can be a useful frame of mind, but it does not make for a compelling performance. I played for hours, and by the end of it, I felt like myself again. By which I mean I could look at Felurian with no more reaction than you might normally feel, looking at the most beautiful woman in the world. I can still remember her sitting naked among the cushions, twilight-colored butterflies dancing in the air between us. I wouldn't have been alive had I not been a rose, but my mind seemed to be my own again, and I was grateful for that. She made a disappointed noise of protest as I set the lute back into, the, into its case. I really, she asked with a hint of a smile, I will not have tired you, sweet poet, had I known. I gave my best apologetic smile. I'm sorry, but it seems to be getting late. Actually, the sky still showed the same purple hint of twilight it had since I first walked, but I pushed on. I need to be moving quickly if I am to meet. My mind went numb as quickly as if I'd been struck a blow to the back of my head. I felt the passion, fears, and insatiable. I felt the need to have her, to crush her body to mine, to taste the savage sweetness of her mouth. Only because of my arcane training did I hold on to any concept of my own identity at all. Even so, I only held it with my barest fingertips. Hani böyle şeyi biliyoruz, aklını parçalara bölebilme olayı, Will'le kaynaklanan bir şey ve Kvot 6'ya kadar bölüyor. Belki 7'ye kadar çünkü aşırı zor şartlarda 6'ya bölüyordu. Belki 7'yi zorla. Whatever. Ama normalde insanlar 2'ye maksimum 3'e bölebiliyor falan. Hani kvot normal insanlardan belki birkaç kat daha böyle demir iradeye sahip olan bir insan. Ve eğer o demir iradelik muhabbeti buradaki ile bağlantılıysa kvot belki de felülüğünden Hayatta çıkabilecek bir avuç insandan bir tanesi diyoruz. Çünkü bir de devi var, kvot kadar sağlam binding yapabilen, belki şey falan işte neydi onun adı, egzadal, belki bir iki kişi daha başka da yok. Felurian said cross legged on the cushions across from me, perfect angry and terrible. Her eyes cold and hard as distant stars. 
with a deliberate calm she brushed the slowly fanny butterfly from her shoulder. There was such a veil of fury in her simple gesture that my stomach clenched and I realized this fact. No one ever left Felurian, ever. She kept men until their bodies and minds broke beneath the strain of loving her. She kept them until she tired of them, and when she sent them away, it was the living that drove men mad. I was powerless. I was a novelty. I was a toy favorite because it was the, because it was newest. It might be a long while before she tired of me, but a time would come. And when she finally set me free, my mind would tear itself apart with wanting her. Kadios chapter 97 Blood and Bitter Rue Kapatmadan önce diyecek bir şey var mı düşünüp geliyorum. Nope. Hadi görüşürüz.